So, um, I'd like to start out by saying vulnerability is something that makes most people cringe. I also hate being vulnerable, but sometimes that is the best type of soul cleansing that a person can experience. Today I ask that you would give me some grace, um, as I want to be vulnerable with you and share a very personal story. Um, before I start, I want you to know that what I take away from this whole entire thing is two things. Firstly, that everyone is both weak and susceptible to the lies of Satan, and that prayer is the most powerful weapon that God has given us to defeat those lies. So going into senior year, I had a lot of expectations. Um, right through seniors generally assume that they're about to have the most amazing year of high school, so I walked into this year fully expecting for it to be the best and most fun year of my life, but I was very wrong. In fact, my expectations were not met at all, and my disappointment about how the year was going was so strong by, that by last October, I had pulled away from almost all of my friends, stopped enjoying school and extracurricular activities, and put myself into survival mode. And I know most of you guys like know what survival mode is, um, when you wake up only because you have to go to school, and you don't want to get absences or tardies, and everything you do throughout the day feels like the most exhausting thing you've ever done, and all you want to do is just go home and sleep. I'm sure we all know that mode. Um, in the past, when I've experienced survival mode, it has only lasted for a week or two, maybe three. This time, it went on for months. During Christmas break, I left my house only twice, um, and I spent my whole entire time in bed, either sleeping or watching side movies. I also cried a lot. My parents were stumped, as I am generally a cheerful person and enjoy life a lot. However, my joy kept leaving me and didn't seem to be coming back. I stopped eating, lost 11 pounds despite eating McDonald's like twice a week, and forgot how to laugh, and didn't even enjoy things like music or acting or sports. My parents finally decided to take me to a counselor to see what he thought, and he did a test on me, and at that point I showed strong signs of all the symptoms of depression except one, which came later. He then confirmed that I had severe depression. I'd always assumed that depression only happened to really lost and sinful people who didn't care about God. And I cared a lot about God, so I couldn't understand like why something like that would happen to me. Unfortunately, as time went on, Satan's lies kept bombarding me, and I was too weak to fight them. I believed them. Lies that said I wasn't good enough, that nobody liked me, I wasn't worth anything, and the world would be better off without me. I experimented with self-harm and thought a lot about suicide. It was a scary time because I felt like I didn't even know myself, and I hated the new me, the one that I didn't know. My parents were really scared too. We had to sit down and have a conversation in which they told me that they loved me even if I never got better. I felt so terrible because it seemed to me that I was ruining my family and we would never be the same. My parents sent out emails to our supporters in America asking them for fervent prayers on my behalf, and I thank them for being thoughtful, but I didn't think it was possible for me to get better. In the meantime, I miss a lot of school. I'm very thankful for the teachers at Grace here because they were so gracious to me as I missed lots of classes, dropped out of a class, and eventually, well, didn't usually do my makeup work. My parents and I began talking about the severity of my situation as I was missing so much school, and we began thinking that if I didn't get better, I might not graduate. Not only was I concerned about school, I was afraid I could harm myself or even die. My negative thoughts were consuming. I remember going on a walk with one of my friends, and I spent the whole two hours just talking about how terrible my life was. After that, I felt so bad for discouraging my friends that I just tried to suck it up and not really talk about it. Um, my relationships really struggled during that time as I was so concerned with my own failures and pain that I forgot how to love others. This severely damaged several of my friendships, but I look back with thankfulness at all the people who stood by my side during that time. Um, when spiritual emphasis came around, I was at my lowest, weakest point. I didn't even want to live anymore. I had no hope that anything could change for me, as I had seen multiple counselors and doctors, and they all said it could stay with me for a long time. They were great in giving me biblical counsel, but I still felt hopeless about my life. I got cold on the first morning of spiritual emphasis week, so I missed all but one of the morning sessions. I was able to pull myself together enough to make it to the evening ones, but I felt terrible and I didn't really want to be there. When Jill asked people to come up for prayer on Tuesday night, I felt so much at a loss that I decided to go up. When I got to her and explaining what was going on, I broke down into tears almost immediately. 
She told me that she had known her team was meant to pray for me several days before I even approached her about what I was going through. I was floored. That was a first sign to me that at that point God really cared about me still. On Wednesday night, the ladies of the team invited me to their dorm where they were staying so they could pray for me. They took me into their room, they sat around me and put their hands on me. They prayed for about an hour. In the middle of the prayer, I felt like the fog I had been living in for so many months was simply choking me. I told them that, and Emmy said, to picture the fog that was in my mind, I was able to see it very clearly. <clears throat> A big gray cloud of lies and darkness that I had been surrounded by for so long. She asked everyone in the room to take in a deep breath and to breathe the love of God onto me to blow away the fog. I kept picturing it, and as they blew, I saw it go away. What was left there was a cross, shining with so much brilliance that it left tears in my eyes. Something had changed. I felt light and like I could dance for hours. When I shared this with them, they all began to cry and hug me like women do, you know. I was so overwhelmed by God's love and His power that He would love me so much to save me from my own darkness and sin, even though I did not deserve it. I walked into that room as one person and walked out as another. From that moment on, my depression was gone. For about two weeks, it was like all the joy I had missed out on for five months just exploded out of me. It was great. <laughs> I couldn't get over the love of God and how crazy it was that He answered the prayers for me. Up until that point, I believed that prayer was effective, but I had never seen it so clearly in my life. Prayer is direct communication with a holy God who has the power to move the stars, create things like earthquakes and tsunamis, and put joy into the heart of a broken, sinful girl. Looking back, I realized how God put things in my life to keep me going. Scripture tells us that He will never give us more than we can handle, and His grace is sufficient for our weakness. God blessed me with parents who dropped everything to help me, friends that loved me fervently and prayed for me, teachers that gave me so much patience and grace, and so much more. Now, I know that um, people make a lot of fun of me because I am really obsessive over my bird. Um, but, and this may sound really weird, but um, we went to the pet store and bought Leo a week before my depression started, and we had no idea that was gonna happen. At that point, um, I had no idea what I was heading toward, but God knew, and he put a little pet into my life so that I would have something I loved and cared about. I know it may sound really weird to you, but I fully believe that God used that bird to keep me going during my hardest days. Um, for my whole life, I've been too allergic to every single type of animal I've ever come into contact with, and it's been, like, super annoying, because, like, every time I go to any social city situation, like, People that have pets, like Amanda. Every time I go to Amanda's house, I have to leave because I get sick. Love you, Amanda. Anyway, <laughs> it, but like, it's been terrible. And so for the first time, I found an animal that I wasn't allergic to and that I really loved. And so on some of the days when I felt like the darkest and like the least wanting to live, it was the fact that I had to take care of a bird and like I loved it. That was what kept me alive. Um, and I can say that no matter how much people make, make fun of me and mock me about Leo, I'm super thankful that she, yes, it's a she, was put into my life. <laughs> Our Father can use even the smallest, funniest things to lift us from the pit of despair. At this point in my life, I am by no means perfect. I still sin so much more than I want, and I am broken by that. I know that sin is an ugly reality and a reminder of how separated we are from God on our own. The amazing thing is that because of the blood of Christ, we can be in a perfect, holy relationship with a God who no longer sees our sin, but sees Christ's blood, which makes us look beautiful. In conclusion, I again want to emphasize two things, that anyone, no matter how scholarly, athletic, attractive, or godly, is weak. Every teacher, every parent, every student, we are all weak on our own and can be hurt by Satan's lies. Going into senior year, I felt invincible. I was soon humbled as I felt lost, lonely, and worthless. It was only through the power and mercy of Christ that I can stand here today and tell you with confidence that Christ is enough for my weaknesses. Prayer is so powerful. Until you can feel the craziness of it for yourself, it's hard to believe, and I get that. For a long time, I didn't see the point. But now, I'm so excited to be in more communication with Christ because of what He's saved me from and where He's taking me. One passage that really encouraged me at my weakest point was 2 Corinthians chapter 1. An adult that I love and respect shared this with me. Part of it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the Father of all mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us. On Him we have set our hope that He will deliver us again. Paul pretty much admits that he experienced depression in Asia. Like, how weird is that? He says he and those that were with him despaired of life itself. Mm -hmm. At one point, that's exactly how it felt. And yet God comforted Paul and his friends so that they would be able to comfort and encourage others. All I really want to do today is praise God for the work he has done in me. And to publicly remind myself of how blessed I am to be standing here today. Four months ago, I didn't know if I would continue school, let alone be, let alone be alive. Not only am I alive and well today, but tonight I'm graduating from high school. <laughs> that is only by the power of Christ. I did not believe I was susceptible to lies from Satan, and yet I was. I did not believe prayer was powerful enough to save me, yet it was. Christ is powerful enough, and because of his love and power, I can stand here with a smile and say that I am saved, I am redeemed, and though I am weak, Christ is strong enough for me. So lastly, I just want to encourage those of you who are out there that struggle with depression to be open about it. There are so many people in this room, and I know this, People that probably have similar stories to mine, or maybe some that have stories like mine but don't feel like their miracle has happened. One of the biggest mistakes I made was to hide my struggles and to think that because I was struggling, no one would think of me the same if they knew. And God could not love me if I stopped faking my happiness. God does not call us to happiness. The Christian life does not equal happiness. God calls us to joy. They're different things. Happiness is an emotion based on situations, and joy is a state of existence that comes from being a child of God. Embrace joy, even if it means you aren't always happy. Let others in if you are struggling, and let God do the work that He wants to do. He loves you, no matter what you struggle with. Christ did not die for the righteous. He died for the sick, the weak, the sinful, and the depressed. My story isn't over, and neither is yours. God is working every single day to make us more like Him. He uses trials, pain, darkness, and good times to mold us and shape us. Trust Him. Cling to Him. And even though it may feel dark, the joy of the morning will come for those who put their trust in Christ. Thank you.